This week on the show, we have Jake Epstein, who plays Alfonso in the hit Netflix show, The Umbrella Academy. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that when you expect good things to happen, they usually do. The reality is most people go into situations with low expectations. They go into a job opportunity or into an experience with their low expectations set and to no surprise, they get those exact same results. In every situation in life, we have two ways to view the world. That everything will work in our favor and that the universe is conspiring to give us everything we want. Or the opposite belief, that nothing will come to fruition and that we aren't deserving of great things. Out of those two beliefs, which one feels better? When we expect good things to happen and for things to work in our favor and go into situations with high expectations, our good energy and positive outlook attracts more good things to manifest into our lives. Even if a situation doesn't go the way you planned, believing that great things will happen opens other windows of opportunity as the universe matches the energy that you are emitting. Successful people go into their day with the expectation that something good will happen. And guess what? It likely does. Make it your mission today to wake up in the morning and say something good is going to happen today. And I'm excited to receive it. As Joy T. Bennett quotes, beliefs are choices. First you choose your beliefs, then your beliefs affect your choices. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, let's talk about your role on the Umbrella Academy. It's such a popular show. So let's talk about your experience and your role for um, our viewers that don't know. Sure. So uh, yes, I, I play Alfonso, also known as Number Four, uh, who's a member of the Sparrow Academy uh, in, in the Umbrella Academy. And for those that don't know, um, at the end of season two of the Umbrella Academy, they, they've sort of saved the world and they, they come back to the present and realize that their father has adopted a whole new uh, set of uh, kids for this new academy they're calling the Sparrow Academy. And so it was a big cliffhanger at the end of season two and season three picks up with uh, this kind of confrontation and um, this big issue because there are these sort of these two uh, sets of superheroes um, living in the same house. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Canadian actor Jake Epstein, best known for his roles in Degrassi, Designated Survivor, Suits. He has now joined the cast of the hit Netflix show, The Umbrella Academy. Jake, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Uh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing really well. I'm really excited to talk to you. And Jake, we have so many interesting things to talk about, like your role in The Umbrella Academy. But before we talk about that, let's talk about your role as Craig in Degrassi. I know that you played a musician that had a bipolar disorder. So let's talk about that role. Cause I mean, at that time, especially, there was even more of a stigma on mental illness though. Yeah, it, um, yeah, I mean, De Degrassi was, was my break. Uh, you know, I got the role when I was, I was 15 years old. Um, not even realizing that, that people were even really watching it anywhere. Uh, we shot it in, in, in Canada, so I didn't really know that, that people in the U.S. would be watching it. And yeah, among many uh, uh, issues that happened on the show, my character uh, was bipolar. And uh, I, I really took a lot of pride in, 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 in playing that role and in, and in getting to kind of tell that story. Like you said, it wasn't something that was really being talked about a lot. I, I didn't know at the time what what being bipolar was. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, you know, they brought in a, a psychologist and, and I got to do a whole bunch of research and, and over the years have sort of received a lot of feedback from a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of teenagers who, who were dealing with uh, a, a mental disorders and, and of all kinds and just felt sort of seen and, and felt like they had a little bit of comfort from seeing that. So I, I, was, I was really proud to be part of that. That's what I love about Degrassi. It was one of those shows that I feel like 
If you're Canadian, you probably grew up watching it and they talked about so many different issues and a lot of people got their breaks there. I mean, even Drake got his big break, right? Who's Drake? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Who is he? Who is he? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's crazy that that's that's yeah. That's that's where he got his break. And a lot I mean there's been a, a lot of great actors. I mean, Nina Dobrev from yes. Vampire Diaries and Shanae Grimes are, are sort of, you know, some of the the, the more well-known people, but there's like there's a lot of really great actors. A lot of them have stayed in Canada. Paula Brancati and Stacy Farber and Lauren Collins. Uh, and I'm just naming people off the top of my head. Um, there's a real community of people that kind of uh, got their training ground a little bit. Yeah. Uh, got to try, got to fail, um, got to kind of get their feet wet and, uh, and and had their big break on the show. So yeah, a, lo a lot of a lot of actors are really are really grateful for that show. And what I love about you is that you're not just a TV actor, you're also a theater actor. I know that after you left Degrassi, you attended the National Theatre School of Canada. So why was theatre something that you wanted to pursue? My favorite actors in the world all, all went to theatre school and all trained at, at, at theatre school. And I was on Degrassi, I was there for five years, six years, and I, and I knew that I really wanted to go to school and, and study. So I made this kind of crazy decision at the time to leave a hit TV show to go to theater school. People thought I was completely insane, um, but it was really important to me. I, I sort of felt like I, I couldn't uh, tell people I was an actor or trying to be an actor with a straight face um, <laughs> without going and in, in, in studying and, and seeing what, what I could do, what I was actually interested in. So yeah, so I moved to Montreal for three years and did this really intense uh, theater program. It was a little bit like the theater army is what it felt like. It was it was like six days a week, twelve hours a day. It was very intense. Um, also, really fun. Um, I started writing at, at the school. That was that was sort of a big gift I got. Is how much I loved creating work. Um, but yeah, again, that kind of launched me into this world of theater. I mean, after that, I I went on tour with a bunch of Broadway shows and eventually moved to New York. So. Um, as lucky as I've been, as much as I love doing stuff on on camera, I feel like theater is is my base, and I I, I, I keep going back to it because I just I, there's nothing else like it. I just love it so much. You know, my uncle is a theater actor as well, and I feel that people that love theater, they just they, they thrive in it, and there's something so exhilarating. So for you, what is it about theater that you love so much? I mean, the the most obvious thing is just your relationship with an audience, which yeah. you don't get when you're uh, working on camera. You sometimes have no idea if if what you did is, is effective, is it funny, yeah. is, does anyone care, um, is it believable? Like you, you, you're really in a vacuum, you're trusting your director, you're trusting yourself and and that's part of the, the beauty of, of theater, I'm uh, sorry, of, of film is you're just kind of trusting every single person around you. But in theater, you have this, you have this live audience that are yeah. there and you get that feedback of, of laughter, of, of response, of applause. Um, I always think like the audience is like your, your kind of other scene partner because you're, you're kind of there on, on stage doing your thing, but the audience is such a huge part of that whole process. So. I, you know, maybe I'm a ham, like deep down, but I, I do love, uh, <laughs> I do love that kind of feedback from an audience. And, and um, again, like I grew up going to see plays. That, that was some of my, my first memories. Um, so I have, I have such an incredible memories of, of, of seeing some, some amazing shows uh, when mm. I was a kid. And, and I, and I have such respect for, for people that can do that. And it's, I know the level of difficulty being able to do it, and and so yeah, when when it, when it, it, there's a role that's appropriate, and when I can, I, I kind of jump at the chance to to get back on stage. Yeah, and you've started numerous um, musicals. I mean, you started in Billy Elliot's The Musical, Green Day's Tony winning musical American Idiots, Spider Man Turn Off the Dark, among yeah. so many others. <laughs> so, what's been your most memorable performance to date, and why? Well, I uh, just a few months ago, I finished a run of a of a one man show that I wrote. Uh, it was called Boy Falls from the Sky, and it was something I'd been developing for years. And it got picked up by by uh, uh, Mervish, which is the, the sort of major uh, producing company in Toronto. And um, 
I got to, I mean, it was, it was like the ultimate theater experience yeah. because it was just me oh. and, you know, 1400 people <laughs> every wow. night. And, you know, if you have a, if you're not, if you're tired, if you're not, like, it doesn't matter. No one cares. Everyone is come expecting a show. There's nothing else to rely on. Um, so I don't think I've ever done anything that was so scary or so satisfying. And I got to tell a really personal, funny story from my life. Uh, make a bunch of people laugh and uh, especially during the pandemic I know it was a lot of people's first experience back uh, to seeing something on stage so uh, that that was that was super uh, meaningful and I sort of can't believe it actually happened it was it was kind of that that level of meaningful where I'm like wow did that did I really do that that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and how did you prepare for that? Because I mean, a one-man show and so much pressure. You don't have Terrible. other actors to. Yeah, how did you prepare mentally for that? Well, I, I one of the weird silver lining gifts of of the pandemic, if you can actually call it that, is because I was supposed to do it two years ago, and then of course it got postponed, like mm -hmm. everything else uh, in the world. And so what I started doing is when theater started slowly opening up, I took the show around Ontario and almost like a like a stand-up comic, I got to I got to try out the material, I got to rewrite stuff, I got to develop it. I, I kind of decided I wasn't gonna just wait to get to do it. So that that gave me so much confidence because by the time I got to the place where I was ready to do it in front of a lot of people, in front of a lot of critics, with all the pressure you're talking about, I felt so so wow. like I felt beyond solid. Wow. Um, and, and I was so ready for an audience. So yeah. so that really, yeah, gave me confidence. Amazing. And fast forward today, let's talk about your role on the Umbrella Academy. It's such a popular show. So let's talk about your experience and your role for um, our viewers that don't know. Sure. So uh, yes, I, I play Alfonso, also known as number four, uh, who's a member of the Sparrow Academy. Uh, in in the Umbrella Academy, and for those that don't know, um, at the end of season two of the Umbrella Academy, they they sort of save the world and they they come back to the present and realize that their father has adopted a whole new uh, set of uh, kids mm -hmm. for this new academy they're calling the Sparrow Academy. And so it was a big cliffhanger at the end of season two, and season three picks up with uh, this kind of confrontation and. Um, this big issue because there are these sort of these two uh, sets of superheroes um, living in the same house, and uh, yeah, so it, it's a, a total a, a dream come true kind of role. I was I was a huge fan of of the Umbrella Academy, and the role is uh, it's a super fun weird part. Um, he's uh, kind of a really angry, uh, uh, aggressive. Um, kind of uh, a sarcastic jokester. Um, he has a, a whole superpower. And, and one of the, the, the craziest things about doing that role is that when I auditioned, uh, I sort of thought I would, when I got the role, that I was going to be like, I was going to be like a super, I was going to be like hot. You know, I was <laughs> yeah. going to be like, this is my show to get my six pack. This is my show. Yeah. And the, the, um, the, the producers, the creators, they um, Steve Blackman, who's the, the creator and showrunner of the show, had this idea that I, he really wanted me to play against my type. And so he put me in a full body suit and put kind of put me in this weird face that kind of looks like my face, but it's all melting. And I had this whole crazy uh, body and face to work with. Um, so a lot of people, don't even recognize me on the show or sort of think it's it sort of looks like Mark Ruffalo a little bit overweight with his face melting is kind oh, wow. of what it looks like. Um, but it's me and uh, yeah I just I had such a such a, a blast um, getting to work in that kind of environment um, just 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 physically the, the freedom of getting to have a new body and a new face um, <laughs> And on top of that, just getting to work on a, a show that I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm such a big fan of. It was uh, a, a real highlight for me, for sure. Mm -hmm. And what was the transformation like? Because I'm sure it took hours for the FX team to do that. And I saw a clip on your Instagram of you being transformed. So let's talk oh, yeah. about that, the transformation. <laughs> 
it just it just took so many hours. You know, I've been oh, watching uh, videos of uh, the actor who plays Vecna in Stranger Things. Yeah. And I'm, he's been talking. I'm like, yes, that he completely knows how just how uh, challenging the whole process is. I, you know, it took about three and a half hours. Wow. And I would come in about, yeah, sort of about four hours earlier than everyone else was called. Um, sometimes at 2.30, 3 in the morning, um, kind of getting ready for like a 7 a.m. start. So, you know, I, I, um, I worked with an incredible team uh, who, who designed and, and, and put everything on me. And then, and then I was, you know, then you're exhausted once the day starts because you've just been up for so long. Um, and you have this hot, heavy thing around you without full vision. Um, so it, it definitely took me a second to kind of own it and to kind of um, to, to really uh, know how to how to work it in a way that mm -hmm. felt like me and didn't feel like I was just getting completely kind of overwhelmed by it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it. But yeah. But but it. You know. It looks. It looks insane. It looks absolutely crazy. <laughs> yeah. was, was it easier to get into character because you weren't yourself? You were playing someone else, so and you had this full body transformation too. So was it no, easier? No, I mean it? it was. It was not easier. Like if because you were so different than myself. But I would. I actually brought a mirror uh, oh, wow. to set with me because the the truth is, as soon as I saw myself, it complete. Then I completely. Yeah owned it mm. but um because i sort of didn't have a full sense of what i looked like um i would sometimes if i felt a little bit lost or, or before a scene i would just kind of take a mirror out and kind of just figure out what my face yeah. <laughs> what my face was doing <laughs> um and then and then kind of went from there and just and just kind of trusted what happened i mean there is you can't help it when, when you're uh, walking around in a different body and a different face, yeah. something happens to you without you even trying. You, you just you just automatically kind of morph into this other thing. And I think that's what happened. Let's talk about the Footloose scene, which is so funny and epic. I mean, it gained a lot of attention on social media. <laughs> Let's talk about that scene. It, this, I mean, this is why I love the uh, Umbrella Academy so much is who would who would who would do that? Who would start a season <laughs> yeah. where um, yeah? For 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 those who haven't seen it, there's this um, there's this uh, there's this moment at the beginning of season three, and and um, and you think that uh, the Sparrow Academy and the Umbrella Academy are gonna are gonna fight, and um, one of the Sparrow Academy has a power that that makes other people hallucinate, and so what you don't realize is that one of the we're into the mind of one of the Umbrella Academy members, Diego, and he loves to dance. And instead of a fight, what happens is this dance off. And it's mm -hmm. not only a dance off, but it's like a country line dancing yeah. those thing. So yeah, so we we were called in about a month before shooting uh, to learn how to country line dance. And wow. it was, it was a, to be honest, it was a great uh, icebreaker, especially when you're a little bit nervous meeting new actors you've mm -hmm. never worked with. Um, I would, if you're ever feeling nervous, take someone country line dancing because you will <laughs> you cannot be cool country line dancing. You, there's no way to do that. Um, it kind of just forces everyone to laugh a lot and kind of get over yourself. And uh, and uh, yeah, we, we worked with uh, John uh, Hagenbotham was was the choreographer. It was who is um, who is fantastic and. Uh, very patient with all of us and uh, taught us this dance and then we went on set yeah. and I sort of had these moments of like is this re is this real yeah. like is this really <laughs> happening we're, we're like we're dancing to Footloose like eight hours for like a week every single day and yeah. I can't listen to the song and it's completely <laughs> ruined Footloose for me uh, but yeah just just a, a completely wild experience for sure. And I'm sure you were sweating buckets with the suit on too, dancing. So they, like they would come, they would push the few holes in my mask. They'd like, they had this thing, they'd drip. It was so disgusting, I can't even tell you. Uh, but like so, so yeah. ridiculously fun. If you, if you see it, I mean, half of it is choreographed and half of it is us just completely messing around that they just kept and edited it together. Cause we were all, I had this stupid grit on my face the whole time uh what i'm doing it because i was just like this is so fun this is so crazy 
<laughs> and you know, Jake, I created this platform to inspire, to uplift, and to showcase success stories like yours. So I want to ask you for you know any of our viewers watching, what are some challenges that you faced when getting into the industry, and how did you get through it? Because I know, I mean, there's not that many successful Canadian actors. Um, you know, I mean, in the U.S. there's a lot, but people from Canada, when you when you come from Toronto and you really make it, it's it's always really nice. To yeah, I feel like also the the Canadians that I know that are doing this, it also never ends. You know, you yeah. you get your big break, and you you're lucky to be working, and then it's over, and yeah. then you're looking for the next gig. Yeah, it, it, so it's not like that's it. You sort of you're done. You've made it. Um, but uh, I mean, I I I was I was. I was really lucky, to be honest, when I was when I was getting into this because um, it, it, a bunch of things kind of fell into my lap. I I went to a school and my um, my drama teacher at my school um, sent me on my audition because he was friends with a, uh, my my first audition because he was friends with a pretty well known director um, in the city. And it was for a Soul Pepper play, which is a, like a pretty reputable uh, company in Toronto. So he kind of helped me find this. And then from there, one of the other actors uh, introduced me to his agent. And so it just kind of, it just kind of started. Um, I mean, for me, I feel like the, 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 the challenge was just sort of figuring out where you fit in all of this. And I, mm. I feel like especially today, being off being your authentic self it's such mm -hmm. a term that's it's, it's almost cheesy because it's yeah. used so much but you know if you're if you're starting out acting i feel like you really need to figure out who what's your voice how are you different than anyone else what what do you stand for what do you believe in all those things um because i felt like i i for a period there was really floating i didn't really know what i what i wanted and I found it really difficult to get work during that period, and and it, to be honest, it was part of the reason that I I really went back into theater. Is I just felt like I needed to really understand my voice as an artist, um, and and understand like my instrument, like what I how I how what I want to do, what I, how I sound, what's what do I believe in? I mean, all those sort of foundational questions that I feel like I, I really got to explore at school, and then when I was lucky enough to kind of you know, enter the acting world as like an adult, um, I, I I felt like I, I really had a, I, I kind of was locked in a little bit to what I really wanted to really go after the roles I wanted to go after. And I knew I had Broadway was a dream of mine. I wanted to go after that. I was so specific about the things I wanted to go after because I just felt like if I'm knocking on the doors of my dreams um, and I'm getting no response or shut down, I, I'm okay with that. Uh, but at least I know. At least I know I'm close. At least mm -hmm. I know what what I'm going for. So that I would say that would be my 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 challenge um, was just really just really being specific about what kind of work I wanted to do, and then tr and then you know trying having the courage, the balls, the uh, energy to to really try and really go for it. Mm -hmm. It's so true, right? It's it, it's better to get a no. And know that you're trying and you're working on your dreams. Then, even if it's better to get a no than no response, right? At least you're getting a no. I used to give myself uh, two-year windows. Like after uh, after school, I was like, I'm gonna give myself two years to try to work. And if I'm not working and nothing's happening in two years, I'm gonna go back to school. I'm gonna figure something else out. But I needed that kind of it kind of lit a bit of a fire. Mm -hmm. So I was totally. I was like, I'm okay trying and failing, knowing that I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I mm -hmm. can sleep very well at night and I'll find something else. You know, yeah. that, was, that was, you know, that was kind of the way that I thought. Mm -hmm. And for someone out there watching who is maybe struggling with, you know, achieving their dreams is giving up and just is not maybe making money or seeing the hope at the end of the tunnel. What would you say to encourage and uplift them? Oh man, I mean, I don't know if this is uplifting, but I will say that that feeling is part of it. That is part mm -hmm. of being an artist. Everyone I know, the most successful people I know go through periods of struggle, go through periods of not finding work. Um, so first I would just say you're not alone. Uh, that, that, you know, especially in Canada, like that, it is a grind, it is a struggle. 
Um, even, you know, actors I know who have been leads in major TV shows, those shows have ended and then they're back to the grind. So I would just say, uh, know that it, it is a bit of like an ebb and flow thing, I think. Sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. Um, and when things aren't working for you, I mean, I, uh, I know something that's kind of kept, really saved me is, is trying to go out and, and create my own work. Like if, if it's not happening, one way, if there's producers telling you no, um, then go and 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 you know mix write something yourself, like write something or or talk to other people about an idea you have. I mean, there's so many ways to create something, to be an artist. Um, most of you know, I'm I'm thinking of some of my favorite uh, uh, actors, and just off the top of my head in this very moment, I know uh, uh, Jason Siegel who's a really funny actor who, who I heard this interview with him where he wasn't working for years and he went out and he wrote, uh, and I'm just blanking on the, the movie that he starred in, uh, <laughs> which totally kills the story that I'm telling you, but he wrote this movie and it was very funny and the, and he, and he cast himself in it. And that was wow. his kind of way into, um, into the industry. So I, I really get inspired by that. It's so true, right? Even for me, when I got into this Forgetting industry. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. There oh, yes. Oh, I just, yes. To, I just need to toss that in. Yeah, there. that was such a funny movie. But I know Great. even for me, um, you know, when I was going to this industry, I didn't want to be a typical journalist and do news or entertainment. I wanted to do something more and create a platform that's inspirational. And there was nothing out there. So I created my own. It took me many, many years. But I did it, and you know that was my avenue. I created my own avenue, essentially. You created your own avenue. <laughs> I really think that's what you need to be prepared to do. It's it's really yeah. amazing that yeah. you've done. It's and really oh, thank you. And if you're passionate, you'll do it because you have that determination and fire that okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it no matter what happens. And you I'm gonna know? do it no matter what. If it's not working, I'll find another way to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And Jake, what else are you working on right now? Uh, well, I, I, um, I shot an episode of a, of a, a TV show in Newfoundland recently. I'm, um, I'm, I'm filming a, a movie in September. Uh, I'm sort of in the midst of figuring out what I'm doing with my one man show because the, the run went really well and there's some interest to, to do it again or possibly to, to film it and try to, you know, sell it to a streaming company. Um, and and also I'm like it's like summertime, so I'm also I'm trying to like get outside and, and be a person, and and yeah, and see enjoy. some friends and and uh, and just try to enjoy life and when I you know when I can. Absolutely. Well, Jake, thank you so much for being on the show. Congratulations on all your success. You're an exceptional actor, and I think that's really why you made it is because you're such a great actor, and they couldn't say no to you, right? <laughs> I do. I mean, I really appreciate that. I do feel like my my drive to just go yeah. uh, is sometimes almost more valuable than than like having, you know, talent. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. I, I completely like, agree because there are so many talented people out there that never make it because they don't have the grit and determination to keep going after failure, right? It's really all the people that you see are not for like some of the people out there are they're not the most talented, but they're the most determined, right? Yeah. So I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jake. Congratulations. Yeah, my on pleasure. Thanks for, uh, yeah. for having me on the show and, and, and congrats pleasure. on all of it. Thank you so much and come back anytime. Will do. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly higher than the sky.